Hello, I am so glad you joined me on my channel today. My name is Karen Slowinski. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I live in Akron, Ohio. My blog is thepowerofacard.blogspot.com and I do encourage you to check out that blog today because it has a lot more details for this card that we're going to do. I'm so very excited about this card. This is a flip out fun fold. So there's the card. I'm going to open it up and you can see how that flips out when you open it up. It's so, so stinking cute. So I'm very excited to show you how to make this card. I've done it um, a couple different ways. We're gonna make a variation of this card, but I have a whole lot of other cards, like I always do, to show you other ways that you can do this technique. And I've got a few little tips along the way for some other things that you're gonna find useful in your card making um, experience. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and we're gonna begin making this flip out fun, fun fold. So let me begin by showing you this card again, a little bit closer. So I've got some of these uh, really fun zoo animals that are in the Zany Zoo DSP. And when you open up the card, that's the inside of the card. Happy birthday to you. We've got this cute little koala singing. So that is a really, really fun flip out fold, fun fold that we're gonna make today. So I'm gonna set this one aside. So I'm gonna show you the supplies that we need today. We're gonna start out with our card base. And this is, this is just the basic card base. It's eight and a half by five and a half. And I'm just gonna fold that right in half and then give that a crease with my bone folder. Okay, so that is our standard card base. Then we also need another piece and this is eight inches by five inches. So it's just a little bit smaller than this piece and we are going to be scoring this one. Now, all the cards I've done today, I've chosen this piece to be the same as my card base. Uh, I would suppose that you don't have to, but that's what I have done. And we are going to be um, folding that and making this into the mechanism that does the, the <laughs> I can't even say it, the flip out part in a minute. You're also going to need some DSP for the front of your card. This is also from that Zoo Crew I think I said it wrong before. It's the Zoo Crew Designer Series paper and the Zany Zoo stamp set. So sometimes I get those two mixed up. So we're gonna need a piece of that and that's gonna be on the front of our card. Then we're gonna need two rectangles of paper. One is your neutral color and for me, I've chosen the white. This is gonna be one and seven eighths by four and seven eighths and that's gonna go on the inside. And then this is gonna be on the flap next to it, so it's the same measurement. This is a piece of designer series paper from the Bright and Beautiful pack, and I just thought this was a really fun design that would go very well with the card. So I'll set those aside. You're gonna need a piece about two and a half inches square so that we could cut our, um, our <laughs> cut our square out of the Stylish Shapes dies. I've already cut that ahead of time. And then we are gonna need about a one by three inch piece of white to do our banner. And I'm gonna show you a trick about this. And then lastly, you're gonna need one of the animals. So I have chosen the elephant for mine, but I wanna show you this paper because it's so cute. There are six sheets of paper and they all have a different theme. So this one I like to call my birthday or my celebration one. Um, and the card that I made before, I used the koala and now we're using the elephant. This next one is an on-the-go sheet, and it's got all these animals doing fun things. A few of these are cut out with the dies that are in this bundle, like this alligator. This one is our outdoorsy one. So we've got some people that are out um, hiking and backpacking, taking pictures of wildlife. Um, I really like making the s'mores in this picture. This one I call my musical one. So these are everybody singing happy birthday or whatever you want them to be singing. And then here's our hobbies. So we got people doing yoga and painting and baking and knitting, I'm really, really cute. And then our last one are the dancing animals. And then on the back side of these, I think I've showed you this before, but I'm just gonna show you really quick. We have black and white patterns. So you've got three that are primarily black, and then three that are primarily white, and you could color those if you wanted to, um, to give you more variety. So that is the cute paper. So you've got lots of choices for animals, but we are gonna go with 
the elephant for this card. And of course, we're gonna need an envelope. So the first thing that we're gonna have to do, I'll move some of these out of the way, is put our piece of designer series paper onto our card front. So we're just gonna put that on here. Now, I do recommend that when you do this, you put your adhesive only on the outside edge of this. And the reason being is because we're gonna cut an opening here in the card. And if you don't have glue underneath this portion, then those are gonna be two pieces that you can use um, elsewhere. So I'm gonna turn this over and I'm just gonna put some glue around the outside edge. Oops, go off into my hand, which isn't a good thing. All right, so hang on one second. I'm gonna wipe up my hand. All right, don't wanna have glue anywhere where it shouldn't be. And then I'm gonna stick this, just center it on your card front. All right, so then, oh, looks like I got a little bit of glue there. So the next thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is take out our dies. So for my cards, most of the time I have used nesting dies. So there are multiple sizes of the same shape. So that's what that means. So the stylus shapes dies has both circles and squares that are nesting. So they just keep getting bigger. So these are really good ones to use. So I'm gonna start out with these two dies. These are the two largest. And the size of your dies is gonna depend on the animal that you make. So if we go back here and look at this one, the koala is a smaller profile. So I could use this square as a smaller one. But because my elephant is bigger, I have to use this size. So you need to have a square where most of your design fits within the square. If you have a little bit hanging out, that's okay. Um, but most of it has to fit there. So this is the size that I have cut out for my elephant, as you can see right here. So set that over. And then you take the next size up and that is going to be cut out of the front of your card. So I'm gonna place this one pretty much at the top of my designer series paper because I wanna have a, a space for my sentiment down here. And I'm gonna take this, open it up, and then this is the piece I'm gonna run through my Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine so I will make an opening. So you wanna make sure your card is open, you're only cutting through the front layers. And the machine is strong enough, it can go through both the designer series paper and cardstock at the same time. So I'm gonna go over there, cut that, and I will be right back. So I brought this back so you can see this just will pop out. Now these two layers, even though they're kind of stuck together from the edge of the dies, now these are two pieces that you could use somewhere else. So that's why I did not want to have glue in the middle of this one. So I'm just going to put those aside. So here we have the opening to our cart. I'm just going to give this another little press since I had it open and ran it through the machine. Now it is time to cut our label. So I wanted to use this label and I wanted to use this sentiment. Here we turn it upside down, or right side up rather. But it was just a little bit too long for this. So I'm gonna show you a tip. And I've started it so I can just show you exactly how we do it. So we're gonna put our die on our piece of paper where we're gonna cut it. And I'm gonna bring out some of my mini plates so I can demonstrate. So here are my plates for my mini stamp and cut emboss machine. And I would place this on here and I would put my piece down and then I would put my top plate over it. So it's all sliding in place here. So my top plate is gonna go over it like this where this bottom part is hanging out. And I run it through the machine and when I do that, I get a partial cut. So this is a very useful technique um, in this case, I'm gonna use it to lengthen, but you could also use, use it to shorten. So then, when I wanna make it longer, I'm gonna line this up, and it kinda of snaps into place, just like that, because it's got all those little dots. And this time, I'm gonna flip it around, and I'm gonna do the same exact thing, but I'm doing it from the other end. So I put my plate on it, and I run it through, because this plate is offset, it's not gonna cut this part here that's sticking out. And that is what gives me 
um, the ability to have a longer strip. So I'm gonna set those back out of the way and we are going to stamp our sentiment. And we're just gonna stamp that right in the middle of our label and I'm just using my Memento Black ink. And I'm gonna line that up. And there, we have our sentiment. Okay, now, the next thing I wanna do is I want to color a ribbon. So I'm gonna grab a piece of scrap paper here. And this is our pool party ribbon. It's a gross green ribbon. It's about three eighths of an inch. You can see it um, thick. And so I was testing my color on the end. So I'm gonna use my dark Stampin' Blend. So this is the Lemon Lime Twist. And I'm just going to color over this ribbon. And it's really funny because I have shown coloring over white ribbon before. And you always think, oh yes, that's a, a very natural thought to color over white ribbon. But so often I forget that we can color on our colored ribbon as well. And I'm just gonna go a little bit on these edges on the other side, just to make sure that it's entirely colored in the green. Now, I also thought about doing this in blue and I had used my balmy blue um, because I wanted to match one of the colors in the little banner that the elephant's holding. And I really liked how this green one, and I like the width of this. I have some other green ones that would have worked, but they're just not quite the same width. So this needs a second to dry. So while that's drying, I'm going to take, I'll get my scrap paper out of the way because you don't need to see that ugliness. And I am going to put him right there. And I have chosen to have just a little bit hanging out um, at the top and bottom. So we are just gonna add our glue and stick him on here. So just a little bit of his ears and the ground sticks out. All right, that looks pretty good. So I think our ribbon is dry. And for this, I like to use a little bit of seal because seal works very well with um, ribbons, textiles. So I've just put a little bit of ribbon on there and I want to center this on the ribbon. And then the only thing I need to do is trim my ribbon edges. So I'm just gonna, and there, I've got a little bright pop of color to go underneath. And then I'm gonna grab my dimensionals and we are going to pop this up. I'm gonna add a third one here. So this is just gonna get popped up on the front of our card. All right, come off. So this is gonna go down at the bottom. Just gonna center it from side to side. All right, so this is essentially the front of our card. So that part is done and I can set that aside. All right, time to work on the mechanism. So again, this is a five by eight inch piece of paper and we need to do some scoring. So I've got my paper trimmer here. I'm gonna move my cutting blade out of the way. We're gonna start at six inches. Give that a score. This is a nice, easy one to remember. It's two, four, and six. So there is my four inch, and now my two inch. So I am scoring along the shorter distance, the five inch, two, four, and six inches. So we are going to first fold the card toward the right. And I'm gonna press that. And then we're gonna fold it back to the left. And then we are gonna fold it in the same direction. So instead of going back this way, we're gonna fold it this way. So let me fold it like that. So this is what we end up with. Okay. Now, there's a couple of things that I have learned. Sometimes I find that I need to cut a little bit off of my edges on um, both ends. 
um, just because of the thickness that gets taken up with the fold. So I'm gonna bring in my little trimmer here and just cut off a smidgen here. No, not that much of a smidgen, okay. Just a little bit as you can see. And then for this one, the reason here is because this is gonna be folding back and you can see how that bows like that. And that's just because that's a little bit um, too long with the fold of the card. So I'm just gonna, again, cut off a little bit and make sure that that will fold back. That actually needs a little bit more. So, all right. So here we have our, oh, I'm hitting my lights, I'm sorry about that. Here we have our mechanism. So this is what's gonna go in our card. So I'm gonna bring that back, move my elephant out of the way. And this is gonna get adhered on the inside of our card. And I know it's a little bit hard to see because this is black, but it's gonna leave about a quarter inch all the way around. So that's gonna close like this. So this is gonna get glued. And the first one we're gonna glue is this back side. So that's gonna go like this. So I'm turning it over and I'm applying glue only to this flap. All right, I'm gonna keep it folded like this, get it in place, and get it centered. And just press that down. Okay. So then our next part that we're gonna hear is this flap is gonna get adhered over to this side. So we're gonna put glue only where this gets covered up. So that can be just a little bit tricky, but we know that this entire top here is gonna get glued, and this part is gonna get glued. All right, and I'm just kind of looking at my card over here, and I'm putting glue. Actually, that might be a little bit too close there. So I'm putting some glue there. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of glue like that, all right? So then when I close this, only those parts are gonna get stuck. And this is going to give us our pop-up or flip-out mechanism. So you can see how that works. So I like to really press this down and make sure that this is um, nicely done. So while that is drying, I'm gonna grab my other bits. So we have two pieces of paper that we are going to be adhering to the inside. So I'm gonna get out my memento block ink again, and I'm gonna grab my happy birthday to you. We're gonna stamp this right in here. Okay, that looks good. And then I thought I would grab my lemon lime twist and add a little bit of musical notes, like we are singing happy birthday together. So I'm gonna add a little bit of notes. All right, while I've got this out, I'm gonna grab my envelope because we have to decorate our envelope. So I'm just gonna run musical notes all the way down the edge. Quick and simple, I think one more here. All right, since we had it out, might as well do it then. So we're done with our stamping. Now let's grab our card back. Now we're gonna put our panels on the inside. So this one is gonna go on the rightmost of our folds. And it's gonna have just the tiniest of borders. So it's about a 16th of an inch. And then this one is gonna go on this panel. So again, we're gonna add our glue and it's got the tiniest of borders on this one as well. And I'm gonna press that down. So don't those look really cute together? We're almost done with this card. So the last step is to take our elephant and adhere it. So the only thing that you have to be cognizant of is making sure you put glue on the correct side. So when we open this up, we want this side to be able to move out with it. So you only wanna have glue on this side. 
So I'm just gonna turn them over and I'm gonna add my glue and get rid of my little uh, trailer there of paper. And this is just gonna get centered in this opening. All right, just like that. And there we have our flip out fun fold. I love it. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Um, I do have to give a shout out to a demonstrator friend of mine named Kelly Atchison. She is the one where I learned this fun fold. And I just, I fell in love with it. And I hope you will too. So now wait till I have these other cards to show you. You are going to love all of them. I am very confident in that. So let me grab this, move it a little bit out of the way, cover up my glue. All right, this next card is using the Stargazing Collection. So here's my envelope and look at this spectacular card. I just fell in love with this whole suite and I just, I had this vision as soon as I got this paper that I wanted to make this card. So I've used Berry Burst as my background. And then I have used the fabulous paper that comes with it. I just want to show you the suite because it's so cool. So it's on pages 86 and 87 in the catalog. So this paper is outstanding. And then it has this really fun holographic paper. This one is just sort of a plain sheet. This has a little bit of design to it. And this is a kind of a pink to a blue, um, like sort of an ombre effect. And then all these fun stamps and dies. So that's what I've used for this one. And look at that holographic paper there. I don't know if you can see how pretty that is in the camera, but it is really lovely. And then when you open it up, I have a piece of the pink to blue um, holographic paper right there. Catches all the lights above it. <laughs> really, really fun. So this is a spectacular card. All right, my next one, I am using the Countryside Corners dies. And they are pretty big dies. And it's really nice about these dies is that there are quite a few I think there are seven, if I remember correctly, different sizes. So you've got lots of possibilities with this because there are so many choices for your nesting sizes. So I have used the masterfully, that's hard to say, masterfully made designer series paper here. And then this is also a new one. This is the soft shimmer paper combo. It comes in five different colors and this one is the pretty peacock. And look, it's very soft. The, the shimmer is, is subtle but very classic looking and then when you open it up i put another strip of that down the side and then i have used the textures textured floral bundle to do my stamp and the um the dye of this flower here or this leaf i guess whatever it is um, but isn't that just so cute all right now we're switching gears a little bit and we're going to my share a milkshake and you all know that I love the Share Milkshake set. I've used that um, quite a few times. And on this one, I have used the Something Fancy dies as my um, two for cutting this out. And then I use this with the bubble bath paper and I emboss that with our Basics 3D embossing folder um, before sticking it down. And then I've used this Glorious Gingham. Um, this is a really fun pack of paper, which I also love. And I added a little knot here in the corner. And let's open that up. And more of that gingham on the inside. Oh, what a sweet card that is. I just think that is so cool. And then my last one, I did not use um, stamp, or excuse me, I did not use dies that are nesting. But instead, I have used um, this really fun die that comes with the Irresistible Blooms bundle. And so I cut this out. Now, one tip on this one, when I did this, put this piece on here, I did put glue everywhere just because of these little pieces here. I wanted to make sure we had good adherence on all those little circles and lines. So I put a lot more glue on than I did in my other example. And then instead of having a nesting die here, I just chose one of the pieces of paper, used the die to cut out this big flower. Now the trick for this one was making sure that these leaves were tucked underneath, so they're on this flap, so they are underneath this piece. 
but this leaf had to be on top of it. So I adhere that to the back of my flower piece. So when it opened, nothing would get um, caught up. And that's, and I put, instead of a panel of paper, I just put another piece of the, you know, the smaller flower here. And I did fussy cut a few extra leaves for those, but I thought that that came out so pretty. And then there is the envelope that goes with that. So this is my flip out fun fold video. I hope that you have liked this. And I do hope that if you aren't a subscriber, you will um, consider subscribing to my channel and sharing it with others who might enjoy this. I so appreciate your comments and your likes, and I hope that I will see you next time. Oh, one last thing. If you make one of these cards, please put it on my Facebook page because I would love to see what you make from it. Thanks again for watching.